Okay, so this is a strange way to start a video. And the reason why I'm doing this is the other day I went out and I did the video on the wild sarsaparilla. And I mentioned not to get it confused with the poison ivy, but I didn't do a comparison side by side like what I'm doing right now. So I want to do this first because this is really, really important that you get to know what poison ivy looks like because it is somewhat of a lookalike to the wild sarsaparilla when the wild sars sarsaparilla is young. Now, what you're looking at on the right is the leaves of the wild sarsaparilla. And I will try to get in as close as I can without it getting fuzzy or the wind interfering. There we go. So notice those margins. Very uh, short teeth on the margins, whereas the poison ivy, you'll notice that the leaf margins have a different shape. There we go. And yes, I did touch the poison ivy. I am in the, what I call the 30% club, meaning I'm very, very fortunate to be able to touch it and not have a bad reaction. So. The most important thing of all is when looking for wild sarsaparilla, make sure you're going for older plants because older plants, the leaf shape changes and you'll see that in uh, the video shortly. And while it's young, as you can see, it is very, very close to the poison ivy. One other telltale sign, although it's not always there, is with the poison ivy, you'll see the seeds down there, and that's the seed structure. Whereas on the wild sarsaparilla, and I didn't bring one up with me unfortunately, because it's all the way down in there with about five million mosquitoes. So uh, the, the flower structure is much different. There's three usually three uh, globular flower forma formations. You'll see that in the video shortly. Poison ivy, distinctly different. So once again, when wild sarsaparilla is young and you're not experienced, please do not harvest it because as you can see, we have a very, very close resemblance amongst each other here. Alrighty, so now let's get to the video about wild sarsaparilla. This is wild sarsaparilla, Aralia nudicollis. Many people will sometimes get a little bit confused and think that this is the American ginseng and get all excited, but that's not the case. And a little bit of history on the American ginseng. America created an instant cash export market of ginseng as early as the early 1700s. And it ended up being more lucrative than the fur trade. In fact, back in those days, and I think it actually was in the 1800s, it actually was, oh gosh, I think that the exports exceeded in the hundreds of thousands per, of tons per year. That's it by the late 1800s. That I remember now. The notable frontier, and some people will refer to him as a folk hero, Daniel Boone, he made his fortune, not on furs, but on the ginseng root. And of course, because of the demand, America ginseng ended up being hunted to near extinction levels. But today, we're not going to be hunting for that, as it is almost impossible to find it nowadays. The wild sarsaparilla. This is a plant that loves, well, first of all, let's show you the area. This is a forested area. It loves the rich soil of a forest. And let's see, let's check this out. The early leaves right there of this plant, you can see are way more pointed than when fully mature. 
And they also take on the appearance almost of poison ivy because of that reddish green glossy look. So you got to be careful too, because often in forests you're going to come across the poison ivy plant as well. Let's talk about the flowers. Here's some right here. The flowers, as you can see, are white to green. Let me, although it looks like they've pretty much fallen off the petals. There we go. And I'm doing this video now so you can look for this plant and keep your eye on it. So later in the year, when these flowers turn into berries, you can gather them and you can actually make wine. You can make jams and jellies, of course. There's one, I think, that has... It's going to be hard now just to focus in on it. I'm trying to find it with the... Uh, I can't do it. Okay, but you get the idea. <laughs> so what we have with the wild sarsaparilla is that there are three globe flowers. On almost, well, usually three. Sometimes there may be two, but it's usually three. And there are no leaves at all on the stalk where the flowers are produced. This is a plant that has many common names. Some people may refer to this as rabbit root, false spikenard, sweet root, Virginia sarsaparilla, wild licorice, which I don't know where it got that, that common name from, but I just like to stick to wild sarsaparilla. The mature plant, now these are, this one, let's see, right here. This is about 20 to 40 centimeters, that's 8 to 15 inches, but this one definitely is exceeding 15 inches right now. And let me see if I can get, okay, right, this is kind of cool. All right, I'm on a hill here, so I'm trying to be careful. There's the under, underneath appearance of it. It's kind of cool when you get under it. And if you hear that weird sound in the background, Chance does not like the mosquitoes, and he is eating them. <laughs> Aren't you, Chance? No, no, we're not going yet. He usually is patient, but sometimes it's like, hey, aren't we out here because I need my walk? Okay. The edible parts of this. Now, technically the young shoots you can eat, although I don't really know of anyone who does that, but they are safe to, to be consumed when they're young. And the leaves when they're young, they are also edible. And I mentioned when these flowers are ripe berries later in the year. They're purpley in color. I'll put a still photo at the end of this video so you can see what they look like when they're at the point where you can harvest them in the autumn. But what most people do enjoy this for is the root. The root system has a very nice spicy taste. It has a nice fragrant aroma. And let's see, I know I had one. I pulled it out somewhere. Hang on here <laughs> as I'm looking for it. Um, this was definitely food that was enjoyed by many First Nations people. And especially during times of battle, it gave them a lot of nutrition that they needed. And they often used to take the young shoots and cook it as a pot herb. And a refreshing tea can be made of the roots. I found it. Here we go. <laughs> so there... I knew I couldn't have lost it. There we go. Check out that root system. It's huge. So here's your plant. The root system starts here and it continues. I made sure I brought my commando trowel so I could dig up a root to show you. And there you go. American sarsaparilla. If you have lots of this in your forest, you can certainly gather it and enjoy the root. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. And you know what's next. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and hit that like button if you've enjoyed the video. Thank you.